Genetic engineering. It sounds pretty scary, right? In a world where humans can control their own DNA, one man just didn't know when to stop. Well, the latest method of genetic engineering that's taking the world by storm is called CRISPR. Walkers, crispers, any flavour you want them to be. Yeah, it is the word crisp with an R on the end. And when I say taking the world by storm, I mean the scientific world, because in your world, you might just be like, eh? What is that? But CRISPR is something scientific researchers are getting so hyped about. So today, I'm going to answer some key questions about CRISPR, focusing on the question of how it works. And I promise it's seriously smart and surprisingly simple. So let's start with a general explanation of what DNA is and what genetic engineering tries to achieve. Genetic engineering is really just the fancy term for us fiddling around with DNA and changing how it looks. First things first, an introduction to DNA. Hi, nice to meet you DNA, I'm Sophie Ward, it's a pleasure. To repeat a point I've made before, your whole body is made of cells. Everything is made of cells. In each of your cells is a set of DNA. DNA is made up of two strands, along which there are building blocks. Here, the four different colours of post-it notes represent four different kinds of building block. So here we have my two DNA strands with their building blocks on in their particular order. The order of these building blocks acts like a code that tells your cell how it should work. So here's our cell, and the building blocks are acting like a specific language that the cell translates into instructions. This particular set of DNA seems to translate to intense self-doubt all the time. So that means that this section of my DNA is instructing my cells to give me a constant sense of self-doubt. If we change the building blocks, that means we're changing the instructions being sent to the cell. In other words, we can get the cell to do different things. So how do we start going about making DNA look different? If DNA breaks, then the cell wants to fix it, right? It doesn't want broken DNA hanging around because that can be a disaster. So if the DNA does happen to break, the cell's repair machinery steps in. The repair machinery is like the doctor of the cell, keeping the whole thing ticking over. But in the example where both strands break in the same place, the repair machinery isn't sure what the DNA looked like before. In this case, the repair machinery starts to look for clues to see if it can work out what building blocks go where. As cheeky little scientists, we can seize this opportunity to fill this gap with building blocks that we want to be there. And this is the basic gist of the CRISPR method. Genius! After hyping up CRISPR so much, it's time to actually get onto it and explain how it works. So I've put the DNA back together and I've just labelled these with the colour of the building blocks. Now importantly, the full name for the CRISPR method is CRISPR-Cas9. Science phrase CRISPR-Cas9. Cas9 is a protein. When I say protein, it's easy to think of protein as in diet, like you eat protein, yeah? But a protein is really just a tiny, tiny little thing. Your cells are full of different proteins, and different proteins all have different jobs. Cas9 is a protein that we can put into cells, and guess what its job is? Snip, snip, cutting DNA. So we can put Cas9 into a cell and give it a guide that tells it whereabouts in the cell we want it to cut. I found it! When Cas9 finds the area that we want to cut, it does just that, cuts it. Double strand break recreated. As I said earlier, the cell wants to fix this break in the DNA. So what we do is provide a template alongside Cas9. This template is made to look how we want the DNA to look. Because remember, the order of the building blocks leads to the instructions given to the cell. So the cell's repair machinery sees our template, thinks, oh gosh, I know how to fix the cell, and then does so in a sort of paint-by-numbers way, matching the template that we've created. Back to our cell, who reads the new set of building blocks and gets a new set of instructions. And voila, the new instructions have made me a better person. 
And so that's how we're becoming able to alter DNA, by chopping it up and then calling the shots about how it's repaired. There's talk of CRISPR being able to be used against diseases such as cancer or muscular dystrophy where muscles weaken and waste away. However, there are also fears that it could lead to a future of genetic alterations in order to seek perfection. In my next video, I'm going to cover some of CRISPR-Cas9's future possibilities for fighting disease, but also its limitations. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and remember, keep asking questions. And here's the summary. Give it a pause if you want, and then give it a read if you also want to do that. What up? <laughs> I just really scraped my knee. Ow. Oh, God. Oh, no. Here we go again. It looks a little bit like I'm being born. <laughs> if both strands were to break, and for example, we lost... Ah, oh, no. <laughs> Brows on fleek. Cheeks <laughs> on cheek. Nose. Does reek, smell what reeks, yeah, when it meets its sense. And I do sense it from my organs. It is more than just an organ. It gives me the chance to feel. <laughs> <laughs>